guide you through the whole process. You can also go up to Lincoln Center at the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It's also free. They will sit with you. You can order microfilm back to the 1500s on your family. The uh, Mormon Church has millions of people going into every country in the world every day photocopying family records. These records increase every single day, so there's more and more records that you can search. It's ongoing. You can start a dialogue with your family. You can search for records for families, members that um, you haven't found in hundreds of years. And instead of tweeting and texting people, you can actually have one-to-one -one relationships with your family now. They wanted me to talk about beer making. I'm not a beer maker, <laughs> but I did some research. Uh, I bought a shirt at the New York Historical Society yes, recently, sure. and I promised to advertise this. They have a wonderful beer exhibit. Um, it's on 77th Street and Park, at Central Park West, right next to the Natural History Museum. And uh, they have films going in all the different rooms. They have beer tastings. I went to a beer tasting with three different kinds of beer, and I learned about clarity and everything else. But beer is over 12,000 years old. It was on Noah's Ark. Uh, it was also developed 9,500 BC in Egypt and Mesopotamia. It's thought by some to be the oldest fermented beverage. It's the world's most popularly, con popularly consumed alcoholic beverage. It's the third most popular drink overall after water and tea. It must be made with great pure water, and you'll see in the movie why that's a significant fact. It depends on the water for the beer. That's key. It's, uh, beer is made with water, hops for flavoring, and barley. It's produced by breaking down starch and fermentation of the resulting sugar. The preparation of beer is called brewing. Most uh, strengths of beer is 4 to 6 percent by volume, and the flavorings are usually natural preservatives such as fruit, herbs, chamomile, mint, juniper, spices. Uh, you should look for clarity in your brew. We were taught at the New York Historical Society to hold the beer up to a piece of uh, white paper and look for the clarity so that there's no sedimentation in it. Uh, it can be fattening, so don't drink a lot of it. <laughs> don't become alcoholics. Um, as a child, my father would give us little shots of beer to drink when we had dinner like a tiny little ounce, just to like increase our appetite. Um, I also want to say that my cousin, Margot Cromerius, in uh, Bedburg, Germany, I recently found her through genealogy. She's a nurse, and she told me that beer is given in hospitals in Germany now to um, patients with kidney problems, especially with kidney stones, to help them pass their uh, kidney stones. It's still a very, very healthful drink. It's full of nutrition. It gets toxins out of your body, and it's an antioxidant. I have the helpful um, items over on the table if anybody wants to look. In terms of the exhibits, again, I promised the New York Historical Society Museum that I would advertise their uh, exhibit, and it will be there until September 2nd. I learned from this exhibit to buy beer locally. Have it made locally because beer loses its flavoring when it's transported. I never knew this before. There are a number of local breweries around here now. There's one on 15th Street. Um, there's a beer garden. Um, I don't know exactly the name. Um, 15th Street Hoboken. Go and drink locally and support your local brewery. Okay? It, it increases our economy and it's better for you than having the beer transported long distances. Uh, in terms of the filming about beer gardens and the history of Union City, we could do our own boardwalk empire right here. Uh, Union City is just massive with the amount of history that we have with the beer gardens, the theaters, the burlesque houses that were here, the gangsters, <laughs> you name it. There's plenty of work for filmmakers and I think we can maybe start that business in Union City as well. Um, we cannot sell this movie because of uh, certain rights that we don't possess in the movie. We did it for artistic uh, presentation today for you. So that's all I have to say, and on with the movie. <laughs>
In the 18th century, Dutch and English merchants first settled in Union City, formerly known as Union Hill, New Jersey. German immigrants started to arrive in the United States in the late 1840s and 1850s as refugees from the unsuccessful revolutions of 1848. The leaders of the revolution who fled were men of culture and distinction who became the leaders of Union City's population. The bulk of the German immigrants became factory owners and workers, jewelry makers and brewery owners and workers. In 1851, Germans left New York City and came to Union City in search of affordable land and space, and it became a giant as a manufacturing city. Of note, the Union City town records are written in high German. From the mid-19th century to the early 20th century, German Americans and Dutch dominated the area. My story begins. The Daniel Burmes Boulevard Brewery, located now at 45th Street and Park Avenue, provided an immense contribution to business advancement, not only to Union City, but to all of Hudson County. This is the site of the old Dairy Queen across the street from North Hudson Hospital. My uncles owned and operated the brewery, as well as my great-grandfather. At the time, it was healthier to drink beer rather than water, since the water was so toxic to drink. What piqued my curiosity about the brewery was when my father, Everett Sherman, took me on a visit one day to the Bergen Crest Mausoleum in North Bergen, New Jersey, on Kennedy Boulevard. As a little girl, he wanted me to see the family's burial site and told me that our ancestors were quite wealthy and distinguished. He pointed out the largest crypt in the mausoleum belonging to Burmes Sauer. When you first come in the main door, there are about 20 bodies in that crypt, all belonging to the Burmes and Sauer families. To the left is my other great uncle's crypt, the Frederick Schimper Crypt. As a little girl, it was a very impressionable visit, going into the large bronze doors and into the tombs. From that point on, the seed was planted and I wanted to know more about them. As an adult, my story begins. The proprietor, Daniel Burmes, was born in 1824 in Hesse, Darmstadt, Germany, which is in the center of Germany. His father, Charles Burmes, was one of the wealthiest brewers in Germany. He was the mayor of Beckenheim, Hesse, Darmstadt for 21 years. Daniel Burmes arrived in the United States at the age of 24, where he worked for three years in various breweries, especially the Kirschenhofer Brewery in Bloomingdale, New York. He married his wife, Dorothea Burmes, in Hoboken, and they had four children. In 1851, Burmes began business for himself in a very small building opposite the very large establishment later built. The small brewery put out a daily capacity of seven barrels of beer per day. In 1862, beer was taxed to generate money for the Civil War. After the Civil War, breweries quickly adopted mechanical technology. Steam engines became the necessary power sources to heat brew kettles, mix and cool wort, clean barrels, and aid in pumping and hoisting. Pasteurization, discovered by Louis Pasteur in 1876, through his study of beer fermentation and spoilage, made long-term storage possible. Shelf life was also prolonged with the use of artificial ice. 21 years later, in 1872, the brewery expanded to include the brewery, a malt house, storehouses, a boiler house, an office and ice houses, along with a few other buildings. The brewery was housed with the best and most modern machinery and appliances in the business. In each department, skilled brewers were in charge. The best materials went into the beer production. The brewery building was a model of architectural art, built of terracotta brick and finished in stone effects. In the tower of the building was a large Seth Thomas clock, the dial being four feet in diameter and was illuminated at night, the only one of its kind in North Hudson. The artesian well house was another, if not the most important feature of the establishment. The well was bored at a large expense in 1887 and had a maximum output of 120 gallons per minute. The depth of the well was 900 feet. Water quality is most important for beer brewing. At the time, beer was safer to drink than water. The water quality in New York City was very poor, so the beer was imported from Union City. 
The Burmese Lager Beer won the highest award, a gold medal for superiority and general excellence as a pure and healthy beverage. The beer was well known and in great demand in New York, New Jersey, and the surrounding areas. There were also bottling companies located at 211 Franklin Street, Union City, and 177 to 179 New York Avenue, Union City. In 1893, the brewery expanded for the third time and took up an entire city block, or 24 city lots. The brewery building was seven and a half stories high, fireproof, and constructed of brick, stone, and iron. The ice house was quite modern with two 50 and one 74 ton ice machines. My great uncle, Frederick Schimper, born in Zweibrück in Germany, joined Mr. Burmes in 1866 in the operation of the brewery after being educated in the finest schools and breweries in Germany, France, Luxembourg, and the United States. In that same year, Mr. Schimper married Amelia Burmes, Mr. Burmes' daughter. Daniel Burmes died an untimely death in 1868, at the age of 74, after a very long illness. His company then became incorporated as a stock company and Mr. Schimper became president. His products gained a wide reputation for excellence. Mr. Schimper lived on Fulton Street and Columbia Streets, always alongside Mr. and Mrs. Burmes. He was a member of numerous social groups for men. The Leader Tafel, and Eintracht singing societies, the Schutzens, the Turnverein of Union Hill, and the Liederkranz of New York City. Dorothy at Burmes worked jointly with Mr. Schimper in the operation of the brewery. She became sole proprietor in 1893 and ran the business along with supervising hundreds of men, a feat unheard of for a woman at the time. She became one of the richest women in New Jersey and increased the business from $2 million to $4 million during her management. After the death of Mr. Burmes, Mrs. Burmes remained the sole proprietor until May 1899 when the brewery was incorporated with the following officers. Frederick Schimper was president, Babetha Burmes was vice president, Dorothea Burmes treasurer, and George Sauer secretary and manager. She died December 8, 1903. Daniel W. Burmes, son of the late Daniel Burmes, was the president of the First National Bank in Union City, New Jersey. Mr. and Mrs. Schimper donated much of their fortune to charity. These foundations funded monies for people who did good things. As of 2012, Susan Sherman was taken on a guided tour of the last remaining Burmes Boulevard Brewery building on 45th Street and Park Avenue, Union City. It is now a graphic design studio and a law firm. The original building has been renovated except for the front doorway and a large original safe. The four-foot clock is gone, but the pedestal remains in the tower. The attic remains the same.